As you say, uh, sorry, yeah. yeah maybe it's maybe it's a world for soccer, but not for for volleyball. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, what you do on the when you play a game? What you uh, can you can what an outside editor do uh, in the volleyball game? Oh, right. Of course. Yes. Um, well, as a as an outside hitter and. I think one of the most important parts of that position is being able to do a little bit of everything on the court because uh, traditionally outside hitters play six rotations. So you're responsible for passing the first, the first contact, uh, hitting, blocking, serving, defense. In some teams, you'll you'll be a secondary setter when the setter touches the first ball. So. Yes. There's a little bit of everything to be done, and I think it's. I really enjoy that position because when something is going wrong in one part of your game, you can really help your team by you know doing something else well. So, so yes, I play position four, and it's kind of the the jack of all trades. Yes, say. you you have to be very complete because. Yes. Uh, but uh, okay. you can see in maybe in mid, but I don't have example in. Uh, You can see in maybe in maid but I don't have example in uh, female volleyball, but in maid volleyball, if France play without Ngape or if Poland play without uh, Leon, it's completely different team. Yes, 
Yes, it's true. There's there's also a, I think, you know, the same with a setter. Everybody on the court brings yeah. their mood and their confidence. Mm-hmm. And yes. for outside hitters, it's, it's really important because the first contact means so much and most teams only serve the outside hitters and not the libero. So the energy that you bring to the court is giving confidence to everyone else. And I think it's, it's really interesting to see, you know, when, when a team makes a substitution that it's super hard to play without, without their starting outside hitter. I will talk about that later because last year in Cannes, uh, the, um, the, the opponent server always, he knows he's, he completely, uh, uh changed the, uh, You, we, are, we have not uh, other uh, good attacking player, and they, they serve on UK right, and we are completely uh, un- un- unorganized. And that's, I think, the the best the the default of Can last year because. Uh, but but I will talk about that later. So, okay. um, uh, you, you come from the NCAA championship. Yes. Um, uh, Uh, our listeners did, maybe didn't know that, but in USA, I know there is a plan to create one, but there is no professional volleyball league for women. And there, is a plan to, there is a plan to create a league in the US. It's called AU Sports, and it's a yeah. short league. Um, yeah. It's a short league, and it's mostly player run. It's very different from short league, and it's mostly player run it's very different from the setup of european yes. leagues um but there is a plan to continue continue with yeah. with this with this setup that they have and yes. if the league was longer i think a lot of people would decide to play maybe at home for one season but the league for right now is only eight weeks and it's it's not a long enough season to you yeah, know yes it's spend not your whole year doing Uh, because uh, the coach of Can say the uh, uh, U.S. want to create a, 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 a professional league for the whole season, but uh, that was in March. I don't know uh, where the project, uh, if the project mm-hmm. will, will be or not. So um, in um, in uh, NCAA championship, you play for Florida. Yes. Uh, yeah, yes, Florida. One uh, a great team. So to see some games with a, a girl, uh, I think it's Ramat Alassan, who is absolutely fantastic, fantastic yes, girl. Yes, she's one of my best friends. <laughs> okay, uh, just, just fantastic. Now she plays in Kiri, in Italy, I think. Yep. This year with uh, Elena Casot. Uh, maybe yes. our listener know better her because uh, she's French. And, yes. uh, uh, okay, that was... Uh, very impressive to see the team play because uh, okay the rules are a bit different because the libero uh, go to to the service line mm-hmm. but uh, in fact it's just it's, I think it's just, I don't really understand but I think it's the same but just the liberals uh, go to the service line so this is the only difference in fact he's never uh, out of the pitch in fact. Yes. Can you uh, give us a impact? Yes. Can you uh, give us The libero can serve for one of the middles, and then one of the middles has to serve. Yes, okay. But he, she never go out of play, in fact. The libero goes out of play only when the other middle comes to serve. So one of the two middles has to serve. Uh, yeah. So the libero can't serve twice. Yeah, I, then, yes, okay, I understand. So one, uh, only, uh, only one middle broker, but not the, the, the two middle broker. Yes. Okay. So uh, you decide some uh, years ago, or no, I think it was in 2018, to come to France. Uh, can you explain me? Uh, I think uh, the scouts of Melouz have uh, watched the game, and I know a lot of uh, French team. Uh, to, to uh, watch the game, to find some players because uh, mm-hmm. they know uh, they want to play uh, out of uh, a lot of Americans c- come to Europe and uh, they w- 
why you choose uh, Mulhouse, which is, uh, I have to say this, the, I want to, to talk a, a bit about that. This, this year, in, I think it was in 2018, 2019, a fantastic team, very, uh, yeah. very attacking team. Uh, um, okay, we are not here for that, but when I saw the, the fan of Mulhouse, because you lost against, I, I see, if I remember, against uh, Mark Cambare, they were very yeah. angry because they didn't understand. But in fact, I think people, uh, maybe you know that better than me, but people didn't understand sometimes uh, the difference between the regular season and the playoff. The playoff or the new, new competition. Playoff. The playoff or the new, new competition. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. So I, I ended up coming to Mulhouse because um, both my agent and Magali, they had a good relationship and it was a really good club to, you know, to improve my level since I was young and I was coming to Europe for the first time. Yes. And of course, we were going to compete for a championship, which was really appealing. So... You know, we, I came to Mulhouse and we did a lot of development, but that was a perfect team to develop on because I had a really experienced setter with Athena Papakutu, some other experienced mm -hmm. players mixed with young talent like myself and Ali Frankie, who were the both pin hitters. And mm -hmm. probably the reason we lost in playoffs was because, you know, a system breakdown of like one. You know, I would say that we were the most talented. We had I agree, I agree. The I'm whole series. Like, we had really not lost, you know, besides the French Cup. And yes. I think in that moment, we almost needed to be pushed a little bit more because we, we usually didn't have a situation where we were down in the game or that we had to come back. We had always been on top. And so to feel like, for the first time in playoffs that we were underneath someone who was putting pressure on us uh, was probably mm -hmm. the reason we did not handle it with, you know, composure, I would say. Uh, yes, But, I think also it's uh, the pressure. Mm -hmm. There's a pressure on you. And also, uh, I remember that two games, uh, Leticia Mamabasuko played uh, just two fantastic games That was yes. bad luck for you because uh, I think she, she, if she wasn't there, it would be because. Yes, uh, of course. Yes. And uh, after that, you, you, you play a second season with Minos, but uh, unfortunately, the season was stopped by uh, the pandemic. So it mm -hmm. was very bad luck for Minos once again because uh, they are, I think, the best team for, for far. Uh, Even if it's a bit closer with uh, with Cannes, for example, I remember last year uh, this this season from I talk about the 2019-2020 season we have fantastic yeah. team also, but I think uh, Mulhouse was a bit uh, a bit better because uh, they have Momba Basoko this year, Kazot and Liu are fantastic in attack. Uh, yes, we were attacking well that year and we were hitting our rhythm. Really, we had not felt we played that well until, I would say, February or March, and we were finally hitting a rhythm that was really, really good, and then yes. COVID happened and it stopped everything. But luckily, we were still ahead in points and still, you know, won the league, technically. So uh, that was really yes. nice, because otherwise, you, you know, it won. felt like unfinished. Yes, you, you won the the qualification for for Champions League. So yeah. Yeah yes, so it was good and uh, for me it was uh, it come as a surprise you decide to leave uh, to play with uh, Nantes uh, last season because Nantes uh, lost some uh, key players also. But uh, I, I can't really listen uh, to be to be honest with you, I was thinking you will go to Italy or Turkey. Because you you were you made two fantastic seasons, and uh, but you choose not and you play well. You, about your not experience. Yeah, I you know there was like maybe an opportunity to go into the lower 
like level of Italy, um, and to go or maybe to go lower teams in Turkey. But um, in the end, like you know, with with all the uncertainty of COVID and my comfort of being in France and my comfort of like knowing the league and having friends there became yes. really important to me. Yes. And also, you know, the opportunities were, it wasn't great after the season of COVID. I had known I would leave Malouse, not because anything that had happened at Malouse, but because I wanted a new experience and to grow in a, on a new mm-hmm. team. So that, you know, was, that was kind of the, the reason I would say that I left, I decided to leave. And then after that, you know, it was, it was a little bit stressful to find a new team. And, you know, Nantes was going to play Champions League, which I thought would be really exciting because I had never played officially Champions League. I had only played like the buy-in to get into Champions League for, you know, at CV. So I decided to do that and just, um, and I was really happy because I think I progressed a lot at Nantes by being more of the main attacker on the team. Uh, for and sure. And perhaps I had been for a compliment sure. attacker to many good attackers. Uh, it allowed me to play more confident as a player. And really, I think it was the most important thing I did in my career to, to take a move where I took a little bit more responsibility. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I have to say, I think if uh, Dant keeps... Uh, Lucille Jiquel, it will be, uh, and uh, you can, uh, for sure, I think, you can, maybe not to the same, I don't remember how the Champions League works uh, last year, but uh, I think you can be in uh, European top 8 if uh, Lucille Jiquel haven't lived, but okay, it's sport, uh, but uh, okay, f- uh, fantastic. Think also, Amanda Silvest played uh, uh, really well. Uh, she was making huge, uh, huge progress in the last two seasons also. Mm-hmm. You, you are a fantastic team, but you, you are right. I think uh, you have m- more and more balls to, to attack, and you have a lot of responsibility, and I think that's good. But uh, now we will talk about uh, 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 Cannes. But uh, I was, to, to comment, I will just uh, do a, a summary of the season. What I think about uh, about the, the play of Cannes this year, I think the main the main problem was uh, clearly uh, uh, Mikael Yawai. Mikael Yawai has all the all the, the balls in attack. To be honest, uh, just uh, just it's too easy for the opponent to to read. Too mm-hmm. e- too easy for the opponent to read uh, our plays. Uh, so that's why I uh, I think the the club the, does the right thing to to take a number uh, attacking player because honestly uh, too too easy to read and I think honestly when I um, you know uh, there are some rumors uh, since uh, so many times who will come uh, will come to Cannes because in a French side we all we. we or no, that's a, that's a rumor. Also, the uh, newspaper of uh, from Nantes uh, say you will sign to Can We know we know that since. Uh, uh, maybe th- I uh, I will uh, talk a bit about that. I think that's unrespected food from the newspaper to say you will come. Uh, I think they were uh, two months ago. We know that they think they, they don't respect the the RC Can, but okay, it's a detail, but. But I think it's uh, something uh, I know some uh, some uh, chairman chairman from uh, other sport and they don't like that at all. So I mm-hmm. think that I think that uh, that okay. I will not uh, talk a lot about that. But uh, uh, what you um, what uh, do you think about uh, uh, the clearly clearly the the club wants to regain the the French title. Uh, well, my question would be a bit weird, but uh, do you think it's possible? I think it's possible, but uh, you, uh, what do you think about that? Is the title the, the really goals for this season? Yes, I, I really do feel like um, 
Like, I would not sign to a team if I didn't think we could win a title. <laughs> Yeah. Or compete really good in the French League. And I think, you know, the, the coaching staff last year, um, it was it was the first year of the staff. And they did a really good job with with organizing organizing a team um, yes. and, understanding, and understanding what the team needs. Because technically last year, it was like a building year. It was not supposed to be what yes, I, I what agree. I, Yes, uh, uh, just uh, one. No, I think for me, uh, Filippo Schiavo didn't have uh, the, the players he needs to to put uh, his, to play what uh, what he, he want to do and uh, to play. In fact, he can. Yeah. He, he, I think he want to do and uh, to play. In fact, he can. Yeah. He, he, I think he missed uh, a second good middle blocker for sure. And also uh, another side issue. The the libero was really good. We we are very good in reception, generally speaking. But uh, okay, the uh, lack of option in attack, and uh, I think that's the problem uh, for uh, Filippo Schiavo last year. So I let you well, continue. Yes, and you know the the team actually they performed really well. Many many games, big games against the DA and. You know, in lots of moments, and then sometimes against the bad team, you know, something strange would happen. Uh, and I would say, like the the chemistry and the gel of the court, you need to maybe like make some changes in in that regard. Maybe bring bring more fire or energy or something. And so I'm not sure exactly, but I really trust that the club the club picks good players for the what they need. And I'm glad to be one of the players that. That they chose because I always wanted to come and play in Khan. Really, since my first year in Mulhouse, it was a goal of mine because, yeah. you know, just the history of the club, the the way the club is managed, and, and many yeah. other many other things. You know, it's it would be amazing to live in the south of France, and you know, the gym is wonderful. So there's a lot of reasons why. I really, really wanted to play in Khan, but this year the timing was right, and I think I'm a good fit for their team next year. So I'm really, really excited to to join and to do what I can to win a championship. Uh, yes, and we, uh, for me, uh, that, that's the goal. The goal we have to to reach, uh, to be to be honest, because there are some fantastic players. Uh, I have a question. Maybe you. Um, the question we are we were asking with uh, with a friend we don't understand because um, the new player were announced yesterday. Uh, yesterday, uh, Marta Mateiko uh, will play as an opposite, but we think she's an outside hitter, and uh, Eva Zaskovic is more an opposite. Can you tell us about that, or if maybe it's a secret? I don't know. Uh... Uh... Yeah, I'm not exactly sure because I'm I'm not super I'm not super familiar with uh, the Polish mm -hmm. league. So, you know, I know that many teams uh, they take players who can play both opposite and outside hitter. They can yes. change, and so maybe she is a player who, if we need help in any position, she can she can yes. do that for us because I I think uh, I think that. It can be great to have players who can do both. You know, it can prove players who can do both. You know, it can prove to be very useful. So, I'm mm -hmm. not exactly sure because I'm not, like I said, familiar with the Polish league. But I trust that they're building a team that is mm -hmm. what we need. So I'm sure it's a, I'm sure it's a good, uh, good fit for, for her. I, I watch some games, so for sure that's a good player. But we don't really understand because. Uh, because, uh, but uh, okay, it's a detail. We we will see in the during games what uh, what uh, Filippo Schiavo will do. But okay, we we have just uh, a doubt about that. But uh, that's okay. So um, uh, also uh, this year, uh, do you know if the club will play or not the Challenge Cup? I'm not sure. Uh, I. I uh, me, uh, I will give my personal opinion. I think that's not a great idea because uh, you you have uh, to go in countries like 
we are very, very far and you have to play two games uh, per week. Uh, so it's very, very difficult, I think. But uh, if we play, uh, le le let's try to win, but, uh, but I'm not sure that's a good idea. But okay. I, think, I don't think we, you don't have a choice on what you, on if you play or not. I think you, you have to play or you have to pay a lot of money to the CEV. So it yes. really depends on what the CEV wants, like what they say, who they say plays what. And either way, mm. we'll be, we'll find the good in the situation and we'll yes. either play or we, we won't. But it will be fine either way. Yes. Also, um, do you know if uh, playoff will take the, the next season or not? Uh, I don't see any information about that. About who? About uh, yeah. will uh, will it be a playoff, 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 playoff or not? Playoff. Uh, a playoff, a playoff. I'm assuming next year there will be a playoff. Yes. Okay. Okay. That will. I think so. I'm I'm almost positive. Okay. That's uh, great. So uh, now we will talk about uh, quickly about uh, your personal goal. As um, uh, is for you uh, the U.S. national team uh, a goal? Uh, of course, it's a goal. But do you think it's possible sooner or uh, later? I think uh, I think that there is a lot of experience in my position in the gym. So yes. I will, you know, after this Olympic season, maybe some players retire or maybe they want to take a step back from the national team. Yes. Um, but for the, for the moment, you know, I think my body and mind really have enjoyed the break from volleyball in the summers. And I'd be better seasons having a little bit of time off. But, of course, if there is the option to um, – compete in the summer for the national team while also giving my body a little bit of rest it needs um, I yes. would I would of course be be excited to do that uh, of, of course yes yes so uh, now we will talk uh, about uh, uh, about you not necessarily about volleyball but about you uh, can you tell us what's your favorite uh, sportsman or sportswoman right now I I really like Noami Osaka, the tennis player, and I love tennis, so I really like her, Serena Williams. They they are to me really good com competitors, and yes. they have their own personalities off the court, and I I really like both of them. Okay, now now Noami Osaka, Noami Osaka also I really like her. You have to to admit. Also uh, Corey Goff. Uh, for me, it's a uh, nice player, uh, very young, mm. but we will see. I, I love tennis too, but, but yeah. okay. <laughs> it's difficult. Uh, I think uh, tennis without uh, fans is difficult. Uh, yes, that's, that's, of course. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's an individual sport, uh, and uh, it's uh, very, very hard uh, to, to play because you're always... Uh, uh, in trouble because um, the tournament goes uh, in, in a country and in another country. You're n never at home and it's very difficult. But uh, okay. Yeah. And, and now can you t tell us about uh, your favorite artist, your singer? Uh, uh, sure. I, I like um, a few people a lot, but if I was to say my all time, if I could see someone in a concert, I would say Lady Gaga. Um, mm. Lady Gaga or um, this this band called uh, Rufus de Soul. It's another nice, nice band to listen to. But um, yeah, I would say those two would be someone I would love to see in concert. Yes. Okay. And uh, to, to finish, uh, can you tell us what's your favorite food? Food. Yes, I, well, I really enjoy, uh, I really enjoy making breakfast for myself because an uh, like a savory crepe is really delicious to me. Um, and this is something I could eat forever, but also I love, uh, I love seafood. So 
oysters, it would be amazing. I really like oysters or, yes, savory crepes. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, uh, to, to finish this interview, I will let you uh, talk uh, to thank anybody you, you want to thank, so I don't know. So. Okay. Well, I uh, thank you for taking the time to interview me and let me share a little bit about my volleyball journey. And, yeah. you know, thanks to all my coaches and my friends and family for the support they've given me in my career to be able to have the experiences I've had and to be able to feel confident in, you know, my career choices and what I'm, what I'm currently doing with my life. It's been really, really nice to share that with so many people who've helped me a lot along the way. Okay, so um, to finish this video, you will see an, an uh, uh, highlight from Carly. I will uh, make uh, you show you a short video about few or four minutes. Make, uh, you show you a short video about few or four minutes. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching and thanks Carly for joining me for this interview. Yes, thanks for thanks for the time. Okay.